Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Josephine Cole and I'm a Bolsendorfer concert pianist and a music theorist. I've recently started a series of YouTube videos for you for advanced music theory lessons as well as diploma piano lessons. Today, I shall present the Prelude and Fugue in D major, number 5 from book 1 of the Well-Tempered Clavier. If you have not watched my previous videos, you can check them out. So, let us look at the Prelude in D major. It begins with a motif like this. This prelude introduces a simple yet another delightful melodic motif in the right hand, which is based on broken chords. On the key of D major, it has this note, with a passing note within the chord notes. The left hand enters detached, giving the harmonic support as well as the rhythmic pulse. As the key of D major progresses, it modulates and bypasses a number of keys with the changes in the harmonies. Going through A major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, B minor, and eventually back to D major. Finger agility is required for playing this rhythmic figure. As it begins on the offbeat, it is necessary to have a little lilt and a little staccato at the start of each beat. Well, somewhat, the left hand is like the clock ticking. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. It is necessary to keep the right hand light and buoyant as there are various stretches and it could be challenging for the student. I would recommend that fingerings are worked out in the right hand and with hands separately with the metronome to ensure smoothness and fluidity in the playing. We could look at, again, the use of pedal point. At bar 27, which is the note to be held down, towards the end, there's a diminished 7 chord on A. into another two each seven chord before resolving to the dominant the dominant seven to the tonic chord. Despite the pattern being repetitive and the motif recurring throughout the piece, it is possible to vary the dynamics with changes of the harmonies to give the piece musical interest and direction. Let me now play for you the prelude. The fugue that follows is interesting. It is a four-voice fugue that begins on the second beat of the bar with eight demi-semi quivers. Here is the subject, announced by the bass voice. The answer is played by the tenor voice. Bar 3, it is a codetta which links 
do the auto voice that sings the subject. And then the soprano voice enters at bar 5. There's another chordata for one bar at bar 6 before the bass enters with a redundant entry at bar 7. The subject is short, but it has interesting rhythmic features, particularly the dotted notes, the rhythms which should be played in the Baroque French tradition, almost like a double dotted note. The structure of the fugue is rather straightforward. It has an exposition of which it is from bar 1 to bar 7. And then the middle section goes through various modulations from bar 8 to bar 13. The final section begins at bar 13 with the soprano voice on the second beat of the bar. It ends the final section with a perfect cadence at bar 22 to 23. And then goes the chorda, which begins at bar 23. Consists of a series of semiquavers, and both hands getting into a crescendo that arrives and departs from the contrapunto texture, which gives the last couple of bars a grand, majestic, and assured ending. Here we have the fugue. Thank you.